Hey, welcome to a new episode of Josh's Car Corner. It's, uh, it's been the first one for a while, I admit. Uh, I've had a lot going on this summer. Lots of things I had to accomplish uh, around my new home. Finally got the garage set up. We can put three cars in here and set up a workshop in the back here so I'll be able to work on projects and work on the GTO. Excited about that. Uh, so I am going to be getting back to working on episodes now that the summer is over and the temps are coming down. Be a lot more comfortable to work outside. Uh, but the next two episodes are going to actually go back in time to my trip to Australia. I had so much footage that I shot when I was there, and I got a couple of episodes released on it, but I didn't get everything released yet. So I've had some time. I'm putting those episodes together. This is the first one you're going to see right now. So this first episode is going to cover a day I spent at SR Performance, which is a shop in Sydney. SR Performance uh, is always at the track day events for them, helping people, giving them advice on how to set their car up and making repairs if necessary. Uh, and as you're going to find out, they do a lot more than just that. And as a surprise, we're going to get to see uh, the flagship track day club car that is always at the track days. It's owned by one of the event organizers. Uh, she's a really cool person and this is a really cool car. So check this out. Okay, so today we are here at SR Performance. Right now I'm talking with Steve, who works here. Yep. So Steve, why don't you tell me what goes on here at SR Performance? We sort of specialize in classic muscle restorations and high performance anything really. Where we will work on anything and give anything a go and we just try to make anything better. Perfect. Could you give me a little uh, of an understanding of what your association is with track day club? Uh, well, originally when James started it, um, he had his Monaro, it's a standard Monaro, took it around a track, uh, decided he wanted a little bit more, came to us, uh, so we started with uh, just a tuning and air reduction and things like that, and then slowly worked our way up to cams, heads, supercharger, and so once we started doing that, we really got an abundance of customers that have been to Track Day Club and met us and come here. That's very cool. How long have you guys been doing this? SR Performance has been around since 1983. I've been with SR for 11 years, co-owned it for about three. Okay, now I noticed walking around here that you guys have some American cars too, particularly Corvettes, and what I've noticed immediately is they have right-hand drive. Yes, for the most part they don't actually have to be right-hand drive anymore, so we're starting to see an influx of left-hand drive. But yes, we do do a lot of converted right-hand drive Corvettes. To make them meet standards for Australia so they'll be allowed to be put on the roads here, what do you have to change from the American car apart from putting the steering wheel on the other side? Uh, generally it's uh, brakes and there's different ways of doing it. You can move the entire brake across. Uh, there's cross shafting, which I've seen and done um, good versions of, and I've seen some not so good versions of, but even some standard cars have cross shafting. So by cross shafting you mean having some sort of an adapter that takes the steering and sends it across the car? Usually not the steering, although I have seen the steering once um, and it didn't stay that way. Okay. We changed that. It was, it's a little bit iffy when it comes to steering. But cross shafting is generally you have a brake pedal box on your right hand side, a shaft that runs across to the left hand side to what is essentially another brake pedal box that then runs through an existing firewall to master some other setup. Once they got to a 30 years of age, um, they became a classic, and so we were allowed to keep the left hand drive. So we're generally seeing less and less of that. Um, but any of the modern cars, I've got a C6 at the front, that had to be converted to right hand drive in general's age. We should mention the car that's over there briefly right now because I know what it is, it's Gen F GTS. So what's going on with that car today? Uh, at the moment, we are putting in a stage two uh, upgrade kit, which involves a small supercharger pulley. Um, a solid coupling on the LSA's wire as well, the airbox and the tube. So when I come to a track day and I see the SR Performance tents set up, what, what all can I get from you guys when I come to a track day? We're generally, for the most part, we're there purely for information. Um, we do tend to help a lot of people out because you're at a racetrack, sometimes there are things that go wrong. We try to make it so everybody can get home. I've spent plenty of track days uh, instead of enjoying some racing, working in a garage, but um, yeah, we just want everybody to have fun and to do that they want to have as much track time as they can so when they start running into problems we tend to be there to help out. Um, and yeah, when they want to upgrade or change something they come and talk to us. Okay. What do you guys like to bring to the track when you do a track day? Uh, well, we bring this 73 Big Bob Uh That one's been around the track many times. Uh, we have this little baby grand 
that we throw around. Uh, my personal Commodore that I bought recently has spun some laps around there. That's generally what we bring down, plus uh, our customer base that are all there. We all go down, it's like a big family. Fantastic. Well, it's great. I'm glad that you're supporting such a great event. So, thanks so much for giving me some of your time. No worries. We're going to look at some of the cars out here. In fact, in particular, there's one car I want to show you right now that is behind us right now that you can't see. Okay, so there's one car here that we do need to talk about, which is Yvette's car. Yvette, if you remember from the video I released a couple days ago, big part of Track Day Club, and this is her personal car, which has just gotten a little bit of restoration done to it. So, uh, how long do you own the car, first of all? Uh, it's been about uh, nine years we've had the car, yes. Okay, and this car, you take us to all the different Track Day events, we right? We do, we do. It's uh, our flagship car, Track Day Club. So we've got a Camtech Cam, Higgins Raceheads, Harab 1900 Supercharger, SS Inductions Intake, X-Force Exhaust. Have you updated the transmission at all? Uh, yeah, so we've got a shift kitted 4L60E uh, transmission that was done by shift right out at Richmond. Okay, so this is an upgrade yeah. to the standard yeah. transmission yeah. Yeah. yeah, Okay, let's just keep working our way back. Um, what about in the rear end? Have you upgraded uh, to a different differential? Yeah, or different we've got gears? Diff Technics diff in the back. And then uh, for suspension, I'm, I'm imagining the suspension's been upgraded as Yeah, well. suspension's been upgraded by uh, Prestige and Performance, Tony at Prestige and Performance. He's done a whole lot of work um, with some uh, conies and some other bits and pieces. So yeah, that's okay. all been done. Yeah. So, so you have a coilover setup now in the car? Yep, yep. Okay, I've noticed it rides a, a little lower than standard too. Yeah, it does, it does. It's nice and low. It looks good, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, it, but it's probably good for the track too. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit okay. of a wolf in sheep's clothing. It looks fairly standard and when it gets out on the track, it's up. Uh, it's a monster. Now one thing we have to mention that you did upgrade that is kind of special in here. You upgraded the brakes to the HSV GTS yeah, brakes, which right. only came on the GTSs. Yes, that's yeah. right. And that was just uh, pure stopping power. We've, with brakes, we've done what we consider the best, DBA, Disc Brakes Australia, uh, brakes and rotors. Um, they're good on the street, they're good on the, on the track. For us, it's about stopping power. Those nice uh, T3s have got the kangaroo port, the slotted. Mm -hmm. uh, so those things all help. I, lo I looked at it and it's definitely a bigger rotor, but it also looks like it's got a bigger caliper. Maybe yeah. a, a four piston caliper, yeah, maybe? I think uh, four quad, yeah. 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 yeah, which is something we never got. Yeah. And we, yeah. got we got jilted on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we keep it looking fairly good with um, detailing shed products, ceramic coatings and things like that. We've got insured with Shannon's. Shannon's a great supporter of ours. In the time we've been in Australia right now, I have seen more Commodores and wagons and utes than I can even count in my mind. But this is only the third Monaro I've seen the entire time I've been here. I've seen yeah. two on the street and this one. So they are pretty they, they are. are pretty rare. They are, they are. So you say you drive this car every day along with doing the track yeah. to track racing. Why drive such a uncommon and valuable car in Australia on the street every day? Um, because I just love it. I love the sound. I've said it before to you. I love the sound of this car. Just even when we're just out cruising, going to the get the groceries, it's uh, it's amazing. And uh, when it's on track, it's just awesome. Uh, Australian two door V8, um, nothing beats it. And you know, I think uh, it's a big part for us is is being able to drive them. You know, a lot of people like to put them away, but you know, our our mantra is to to get out there and have a go in them, have some fun in them. That's what they're built for. Right, but I tell you where I really appreciate you is, be, is where you actually do take it out yeah. and drive it because there are so many people who have cars like this and they sit on them because they look at them as investment yeah. opportunities yeah. and they don't drive them and they don't, or they have them and, oh, I'm afraid to put too many yeah. miles on them. That's a really big problem yeah. in the States. So that's Same here, cool. and each to their own. You know, I respect that, that people uh, are putting those cars away. I respect it, but for, for, for me and for us, you know, having fun in this car, nothing beats that exhilaration. You know, you get out there, all your all your woes and your troubles are forgotten. The next corner's coming, mm -hmm. and uh, you it's a, it's a great stress uh, relief. And driving this car is just you can't get the grin off your face. Yeah. It's great fun. Well, we have that in common. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, thank you for giving us a more detailed look at the thank car. You. We'll see it out on the track on Saturday. Yeah. And uh, yeah, keep enjoying it. And yeah, yeah. and uh, it's a great car. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So there you go, a small glimpse at an Australian performance shop and a glimpse at the flagship track day club car, that beautiful green Monaro. Uh, it's a cool car, I got to drive it a little bit uh, on the road and on the track. 
which was a lot of fun. And thank you to so much to Yvette for, uh, and James for allowing me to do that with their personal car. So the next episode is gonna feature my experience in Australia at one of their track day club events, where I got to drive a couple of different cars, I got to ride in a bunch of different cars, and spend a day down with them in Australia experiencing what a track day is like for them. Uh, and I'm so excited to get that episode together and release to you guys. So look for that, that'll be the next one. And I promise it's gonna come out sooner than later. So thanks for watching this little episode of Josh's Car Corner and uh, we'll see you at the track.